Welcome back to Canadian Justice. Now, Jessica, I wanted to follow up with you on what you were saying in the last segment about a, a case in British Columbia called McCormick involving minors drinking at a party. Can you elaborate on what happened in that case? Yeah, so Christine, we had uh, the uh, Pearson household, uh, the Pearson's daughter uh, hosted a party uh, and uh, the, the Pearsons, the parents were around, uh, but there were minors there drinking alcohol. Uh, the parents were monitoring. Uh, it was BYOB. They were ensuring that nobody was going to drink and drive. Unfortunately, uh, two people, uh, a 17 and 18 year old left that party uh, and they stole a nearby car where the keys had been left in the car, which happened to be for sale at the time. And uh, shortly after taking off in the car, uh, they were involved in an accident uh, and uh, one of them died and, uh, and the other was severely injured. Uh, so um, the Pearsons were sued uh, and effectively uh, the BC court uh, said, you know what, the, the BC court, so in that case, the judge took sort of judicial notice or understood uh, that Salt Spring Island, where the accident occurred, was a small, close-knit community where it was common for minors to drink and uh, and smoke marijuana, et cetera. I uh, and said, you know, given the circumstances, uh, the parents here did everything right and and did not find liability on the parents. So that case is a good example for what you can do to not be found liable uh, as a parent when you have minors in your house drinking alcohol. I'm so fascinated by this question of what what circumstances could create liability. So Adam, for example, I live in Toronto, which has many public transportation options available. Is there a difference, a different ability to create liability to, for, between people who live in cities where public transportation, Uber and cabs are all re readily available versus someone who hosts a party in a more remote or rural community? Yeah, it's a great question. And, you know, I hate to give kind of a lawyer answer. It depends. But, you know, it, it all does depend on the facts. You know, if, if you as a host ask a visibly drunk person, how are you getting home? Uh, and their answer is Uber in the city of Toronto. Uh, that's a totally reasonable answer. And frankly, if the person then leaves your house, gets in their car and drives, I can't imagine that a court would find that host liable. Um, you know, if you live in a rural community where you know that there is no Uber available and the same conversation ensues, you know, the host might have to think twice about how that person is getting home and whether they have a responsibility to do something about it or not, you know, again, depends on the, the circumstances. You know, in a rural setting, you know that people are either driving or getting a lift from someone. And do you need to ask how they're getting home morally? I think you should. Uh, and, and just describe circumstances where you can defend yourself as a host, right? Um, legally, it really does depend, uh, you know, on some of those circumstances that, uh, that we've described earlier. Dan, you don't need to give them a lie detector test, that's for sure. Dan, I, I'm still interested in the issue of minors. I mean, we're in grad season here in Ontario, a lot of grad parties taking place. And I, I wonder if there's a difference between a party being hosted when the parents aren't home versus when they are home. Um, is there a difference in the ability to attract liability? If you know your kids throw a party because you went away and one of the kids drinks and drives home drunk, is, is that kind of a, a no liability possible situation or, or could it still happen? Well, I basically I'm asking, should, should parents just, just turn a blind eye maybe? Well, I'll tell you what we did. We hosted uh, our daughter's uh, graduation party from high school, and uh, we uh, uh, they all uh, about a hundred of them arrived by bus, uh, by coach, and uh, we hired a security company. We had two security guards, and my wife and I went out for dinner for the night. <laughs> and so, um, uh, luckily, you know, nothing uh, nothing untoward happened uh, that I know of. Uh, but we, uh, you know, we, we, we removed all, all the, uh, the breakables and valuables and covered all the furniture and everything was fine. Um, we were not home. So, um, uh, so that's one way to do it, uh, I suppose. I don't believe being absent uh, necessarily attracts liability. Um, it just, you know, it depends on how you handle the situation. And to some extent, you have to know, your, know the crowd that you've invited. But, um, but if you are home, uh, and that, you know, 
if you are home, you actually, I, I think, have to pay attention to what's going on because I think there's, you have a bigger problem if you're home and um, and bad stuff is going on, like really, you know, excessive drinking uh, and or drug use is going on uh, under your nose and you're ignoring it. Right. So, it's, it's just interesting to see what different incentives these these the, the law creates for for social hosts. We've got to go to commercial break, but when we come back, we'll continue this discussion.